place to another place, some additional machine elements like pulley, sprocket, and gears are mounted on the shaft. Okay, so bearings are mounted on the shaft. Okay, so usually up to 5 meter length shafts only available. So after that, we have to do some coupling by using coupling or we have to mount with the what? Bearing. Okay, so other machine elements like bearing, sprocket, gears are mounted on the shaft. So, so consider this is the shaft. So generally, shaft mounted by the bearings on the two ends, right? <laughs> okay. So we know that shaft is used to transmit power from one place to another place. So in order to transmit power plug from one place to another place, we need some additional machine element called what? Bell drive or chain drive, sprocket or whatever. Okay. In other way, it's not a plain shaft in all the applications. In some application, it may be a plain shaft. For some application, it may be step. The major step in the middle of the diameter. The maximum diameter is present in the middle of the shaft, and the minimum diameter is present on the end of the shaft. Okay, so most of the application shafts are in step in nature. Okay, clear? So any doubt in the slide? So this is the formal definition about shaft. Clear? Can I go to the next slide? Okay. So next we will see about what are the different type of shafts. Different types of shaft. Okay. So depends upon the application, shafts are called in a different name. Okay. For example, we can see here axle shaft, spindle shaft, powder shaft, jack shaft, and line shaft. Okay. So what is axle shaft? Do you know about axle and uh, our automobile front axle and rear axle? So axle is generally a non-rotating arm. Okay. So both the gears are meshed, so power is obviously transferred from 
the main shaft to the counter shaft. So what is the direction of rotation of the counter shaft? Which is counter the direction of what? Primary shaft or your main shaft. That's what it is called as counter shaft. So simple definition, it is the secondary shaft which is driven by the main shaft or some other shaft. Okay. And third one is jack shaft. Jack shaft is very simple. It is an intermediate shaft between the primary shaft and the secondary shaft. It's an intermediate shaft. So we could see in our uh, clay workshop also, workshop, we could see in this jack shaft. And third one is line shaft. So what is line shaft? If the shafts are arranged in a series manner, so power is transmitted from one shaft to another than the rest of the shaft, it is called as line shaft. So these are all the different kinds of shaft, which is depends upon the application we are calling it a, a different name. Okay. But generally we are going to talk about only transmission shaft. Transmission shaft. Right. And third one is, we are going to talk about what are the materials and manufacturing methods available to make a shaft. Okay. Any idea? What are the commonly used materials for shaft? Commonly used materials are low carbon steel, medium carbon steel, high carbon steel, for some severe application, we could use alloy steel. Okay. When the application demands, we could go for alloy steel. For medium application, some uh, smaller application, we can use low carbon steel or medium carbon steel. So this kind of shaft are also called as machinery steel. Machinery steel. So what is that? Ordinary transmission shaft are made up of low carbon steel or medium carbon steel. Example is 30 CA and 40 CA. C is nothing but the carbon content present in the steel. Okay, carbon content present on the shaft steel. Okay. And second one is, if the application is demand greater strength, so that time we could not use low carbon steel. So we have to go for higher one called medium carbon steel or high carbon steel. Best example is 45 CA and 50 CA. Okay. So in your problem, we could face the problem. So most of the time, the material will be given in your problem. Okay, for example, 40, for the particular application, 45 CA or PCA, the carbon content and the numbers only given. So based on the application, we have to choose the, all the values, permissible shear stress, bending stress and all the values to be taken from the data. Okay, so the designer must to use the data effectively. Otherwise, we could not design a shaft for all the applications. So in uh, design of machine elements, mainly 50% rely on your design data. Because all that, we are not going to create any formula, we are not going to apply new methodology. Okay, we have already set up formula, we are going to use the formula. But the thing is, some of the variables are missing. Those variables are available in your database. So we are going to find out which data are suitable for the particular application. This is one. Okay. And third one is alloy steel. I said. So alloy steel includes nickel, chromium and molybdenum steels are also used for depends upon the applications. Okay. Right. Next one is what is the general manufacturing process used for shaft making? One is hot rolling, another one is cold rolling. Okay, so generally for plain carbon steel. Manufactured by hot rolling and followed by cold drawing process or finished by grinding or turning operations. Okay, so when we use hot rolling process, what are the advantages and disadvantages we have that we see? So first, these materials are least expensive. Okay, these materials are least expensive. Second one is, since it is hot roll, scaling is always present. It means that what? Distortion is present on the shaft material. So what is distortion? We know that. What is that? Variness formed on the shaft material. So we could not use those kind of material for severe application. Otherwise the shaft may be broken. Okay. So depend upon the application only, we have to carefully select the material and manufacturing process. So these manufacturing process available and can be used for smaller applications. Okay. Then we can use cold drawing. Okay, so what are the advantages we have? Since it is cold drawn, it has got inherent characteristics of excellent or better surface finish. Excellent or better surface finish.
surface fish. If we have better surface fish, what is the advantage? We should not go for a higher machining process. We should not recommend higher machining process. For example, if the shaft is made by hot rolling process, if the surfaces are not good enough, which is in barrenness, what we have to do? It recommends some good finishing operations. If we do the manufacturing process by using cold rock, what is the advantage? We have better surface finish. And second one is, amount of machining capital is minimum. It is obvious. Because we have better surface finish. And third one is, we have better yield strength. Better yield strength. Okay, so yield strength is very, very important. Because what is that? What is yield strength? Any idea what is yield strength? You might have studied in the previous sessions. What is yield? After that, what will happen? After yield, what will happen? It may be broken. Okay, so depends upon the yield. So we could limit them. Okay, so idea is to bring the value within the yield stress field. Okay. Next, we can use alloy steel also. So when we can use alloy steel, so first one is used for relatively severe surface conditions. Severe surface conditions. And second one, however, to obtain the total effect of drawing, the parts are need to be clean printed. So after made of the shaft, so further it recommends heat treatment process. Okay, because we are going to deploy this kind of shaft in a severe applications. Okay, so the material should not break. So, so it recommends what? Some heat treatment process. Okay, and second one is lesser tendency to crack. Lesser tendency to crack. This is the greatest advantage of using all ice cream. And third one is no rap of distortion. No distortion present on the surface of the shaft. Right? And third one is residual stresses. So if we make the shaft by hot rolling process, what will happen? Residual stresses is common, just nature. Right? So how do we reduce or how do we eliminate residual stresses generally? Any idea? Yeah. Annealing process, very good. Sarah said, annealing process. And what is the simple way to remove residual stresses from the shaft? We can provide keyways. Keyway is one kind of activity to reduce residual stresses. Okay. So if we use alloy steel, what is the advantage? Residual stresses are very less as compared to the other type of steels. Okay. So these are the common type of material and manufacturing process available to make our shafts. Right? Then, so we are going to a very important topic. So when we going to design a shaft, so we should know what are the stresses acting on the shaft. So this is very important. Right? What are the stresses? So first, first one is shear stress due to transmission of tau. I am just talking about only tau. For example, so take this pen. Okay, I am just applying a torsion moment here with respect to this end. What will happen? There is a twist on the shaft. Okay, I am just talking about the torsion only. I am not talking about the bending. Okay, so due to the torsion, what will happen? The bending will try to break because of the shear stress induced. And I am applying some twist on it. Okay. So shear stress due to transmission of power. So this is my call. And second one is bending stress. For the same shaft, so it will be like a simply supported beam. I am applying some load here. What will happen? It will be subjected to bending. So we will get deformation shape like this. Okay. So bending stress, it may be tensile or compressive due to the force acting upon the other machine element. In the previous slide I said, so in order to transmit power from one place to another place, we use some other machine elements called gears, pulleys, spikes. So all the machine elements are mounted on the shaft. So what will happen? Already this shaft has some self weight. Okay, so acting on the vertical direction, I am just mounting the bracket, then gears, pulleys on the shaft. What will happen? The total weight acting on the shaft, it will try to bend the shaft. It will try to bend the shaft. So, the bending moment due to the other machine element more than on it, right? Your pulleys, gear elements, like etc. Okay. And third one is the combination of opposite two points. Subjected to torsion and subjected to bending. Okay. So, please note down these three points. And the stresses. Okay. So, first one is shear stress due to transmission, bending stress due to other machine element, plus 
addition of what? Set rate. And third one is stress due to combination of the above set two points. Can I go to the next slide? So on what criteria, on what basis we have to decide our shot? Okay, I said two conditions. One is with respect to this A, I am just applying the torsion moment here. So based on this situation, okay, so I have to decide a shot. And second condition is, it's like a simply supported beam. I am applying some load on it. And other machine element also acting on it due to that bending force will act on the machine element. Bending stress will be induced obviously. Okay. So on that situation, so we have to decide the shaft. For this type, two particular situation, how do we decide a shaft that we have to see? First one is based on strength and second one is based on rigidity and stiffness. Okay. So what is based on strength? So most of the application shafts are designed for strength. Okay, in some applications only shafts are designed for rigidity and stiffness. Okay, can you say any example for uh, design of shaft on the basis of rigidity and stiffness? Cam shaft. Because the angle of twist is not more than the predetermined value. Okay, so we have to limit the value, we have to bring the value, the theta value within that particular range. For that kind of shaft, we have to go for based on the rigidity and stiffness. We could not go for a based on the strength. Based on the strength is very common. Okay. Right. So based on the strength, how we are going to design a shaft? So in this method, design is carried out so that the stress acting at any location of the shaft should not exceed the material. My material may be anything. It may be 30 CA or 45 CA, whatever it is. But it should not exceed the predetermined value. So we should be equal to the it should be equal to the or below the value of yield stress. Okay? So this kind of approach is called as based on strength. So I am not considering the deflection, I am not considering the twist. Okay? In based on strength. And second condition, I am going to consider the twist and deflection. It's called based on rigidity and based on stiffness. Okay, so what is stiffness and what is rigidity? You see, the basic idea of the design in such cases depends upon the allowable deflection and twist of the shaft, as I already said. So we have to consider two cases. One is torsional rigidity, another one is lateral. Okay, so what is torsional rigidity? I'm just holding it here in my hand. I'm just giving a twisting moment here. Okay, so first case is torsional rigidity. It does not twist too much does not twist too much under the action of external torque. I am giving a torque here. I am not applying any UTL or UTL whatever it is. I am not applying any point here. I am just giving a torque. Okay? For the condition, what is the behavior of the shaft? How do we design the shaft? What is the suitable diameter of the shaft? So the basic idea of design of shaft is very simple. The basic idea is to find out the diameter. That's all. For the given application. To find out the given diameter, find out the diameter, we have to follow these steps. So what are the forces, what are the loads, what is the method, what are the method of approach, and everything we have to follow. Right? Then, when we talk about lateral rigidity, it does not <coughs> deflect too much under the action of external force, like this. I am just applying external force here. So what will happen? When we apply some external force, automatically it will bend. We have a deformation shape like a long manner, but this is not an exact example. I am just showing this as a simple example. Okay? So, so shafts can be designed by any of these two approaches. That's recommended by the application. One is based on strength, another one is based on rigidity and stiffness. So when we design a cap shaft, we could use second approach, rigidity and stiffness. For smaller application or other medium applications, we can directly use for based on the strength Okay? Right. So first, we will discuss about based on strength. Right? So in based on strength, what are the parameters? What are the stresses we have to consider? What are the forces acting on? Right? So first, shaft subjected to twisting moment only. Okay? Take this 
a supply shaft. This is not a shaft. Take this is a plane shaft. I'm just holding here. I'm just going to apply a twisting moment here. And what is the behavior? And what is the truth of the diameter for my application? For my given power. Okay? So shaft subjected to twisting moment only. And second case, shaft subjected to bending moment only. I'm just applying the external load here on the shaft. So what is the bending? What is the deformation power I'm getting? What is the shear force? What is the bending I'm getting? So it is about subjected to bending. And third case is, I'm giving a torque here as well as some external forces acting on it. Okay, it may be a gear weight or due to the same weight or pulley weight and whatever it is. I'm giving a twist here as well as we have a vertical load here. So it's a combination of torsion plus bending. Okay, the third case is, deals about shaft subjected to combined twisting and bending. Okay, and fourth one is shaft subjected to axial load in addition with torsion and bending. So when we decide a shaft based on the strength, we have to consider these steps. Okay, so in your problem, it will be clearly given, it may subject it to shear, so it may subject it to bending or it may subject it to combination of the shear stress as well as bending in addition with axial load. The main thing is a designer who understands the problem. So we have to interpret the problem very clearly. Students are always making mistakes by interpretation. So when we see the problem, directly they will go to the formula. What is the twisting moment the torsion formula? You know, they have T by J is equal to shear stress by R, R is equal to T by J. They will automatically, they will go and they will write it immediately, but they should not consider the steps to, to follow. But if we find out the bending moment, immediately they will write M by I is equal to M by Y is equal to E by R, that they will write. Okay, first we have to understand the application. Okay, and what basis we have to decide that we have to identify from the problem. But we have to understand right? <coughs> Next. So this is the basic idea of the shaft. Any doubt in the shaft? What is shaft? What are the different types of shaft? What are the material used? Manufacturing method used? What are the basic we have to design a shaft? Any doubt? Any doubt? I think I am going very fast. So next we directly go to the formula. Okay, so this is very I am just giving a basic idea about the shaft. Okay? Right. Based on the strength, what are the formulas we have to use? Let me see one by one. Okay, so what is the general torsion formula? What is the general torsion formula? Not that. Hold on. 
naught square minus d i square. So F A is nothing but the axial force applied at the shaft. Okay? So when I'm talking about only the axial force acting on the shaft. Okay. Second case, when the bending load acting on the shaft, what is the behavior? What is the formula to find to design a shaft? So the general formula, what is sigma B? What is that formula? M by S equal to sigma B by Y. So already we have to write. Sigma B is equal to my by I. The same relation here. The final equation will become 32 M B divided by pi D Q. This is for solid shaft. And we have to introduce outer diameter as well as the inner diameter equation. So 32 M B D naught divided by D naught power power minus D A power for the final equation for hollow shaft. Okay, we are subjected to bending load. Okay, and similarly, so when we talk about the torsional load, okay, I'm just fixing my pen here, I'm just giving a torsion here. What is the torque transmitted or what is the twisting moment when I'm applying some load, what is the behavior of the shaft? Okay, so if I find out uh, the equation, T is equal to 16 D divided by pi Q. So already we have discussed the formula, right? 16 D divided by pi Q is the final equation. And for the hollow shaft, 16 D, D naught divided by D naught power power minus D A. So this is very basic form. So you might have studied in your strength of material, right? That is one part. Okay. 
every shaft by means of a belt. Okay, power is transmitted from the primary to the secondary with help of some belt. If the belt is introduced, so we have to consider the tension of the belt. So tension on the tight side and the tension on the slot side. And T1 and T2. In some cases, the notation may be there, T1 or P2 or whatever in the case. But the general is T1 and T2. Tension on the tight side and tension on the slot side. Okay. The similar formula here. What is torque here? Generally, what is torque? Doubling torque. So this is a general formula. You know that. What is torque? T is equal to W into R. W into R. What is W here? What is the total load acting on the pulley because of the belt? T1 minus T2. Tension on tight side minus tension on slack side. So T1 minus T2 into R. What is R? Radius of the pulley. Radius of the pulley. So tension is actually neutral. Okay? If other machine element like pulleys or mounted on the shaft, we have to use this formula to find out the torque. M T is equal to T1 minus T2 into the R. So usually expressed in Newton meter or Newton m. Newton m. The basic unit is Newton meter. R T Newton meter. Okay. Next case, if gears are mounted on the shaft, what equation I have to use? Okay, if belt is mounted, I can have to use the formula. If the gear is mounted, what is the relation? What is the formula? If the belt is used, T1 minus T2 is directly used. If the gears are used, how the power will be transmitted from the primary shaft to the secondary shaft? So we have to calculate the tangential force as well as the radial force. Because gears are having point contact, not the surface contact. Okay? So if point contact is there, what will happen? So it may be tangential or radial. For example, consider this is my, this is a simply supported beam. Okay? I am just mounted a gear here. Okay, what will be the case? So I have to find out this tangential force because of the gears mounted on the shaft. Okay, so what is the equation? So general equation. What is empty here? Force into radius. Force into radius. What is the force into radius? What is the force here? Tangential. What is the radius? It's a disc. It's a circular in nature. R. R G. Why? The G is nothing but the gear. Radius of the gear. So F R. What is F R here? Sorry. F R. What is tangential force here? Ready to tangential force into tangent. If gears are mounted at the shaft, we have to use this formula to find out the torque transmitted by the shaft. What is the formula? Ft into Rg. Tangential force into radius of the gear. What is the unit? Same. Newton meter. To find out the radial force, tangential force into tangent power. Tangent. So R is nothing but the angle. Okay? Right. Please note down. Gear pitch angle in degrees. So, the gear pitch angle. So, generally the angle, sir. Generally is the angle. Not pitch angle. Pressure. 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 Exactly. Pressure. So, generally it has given angle. 30 degree or 40 degree. Depending upon the gear. Depending upon the gears, which is point contact. Okay. For example, in this case, so it may be given that 30 degree here. So, this is the delta value. But when substituting, we have to convert degree into radius. Pi by 180. Into pi by 180. Theta is the pi by 180. So convert into radius. Can I go to the next slide? Right. So we have discussed about shaft subjected to torsion alone, bending alone and subjected to torsion and bending, right? The third case is shaft subjected to axial load in addition with bending and torsion. Bending and torsion. Okay. So we have to follow the AS and the code and AS and the formula. Right? What is the general formula? This formula is also available in 
you have data book, I will tell you the page number later. Okay? So this is the formula. 16 divided by 16 divided by 5 into C minus 1 minus K for 4 into root of KB and B plus all 5 D F A D naught 1 plus K square divided by 8 whole square plus K T M. Okay. So this is for what? Hollow shaft or solid shaft? This is for hollow shaft, not for solid shaft. Okay. And here they have introduced three parameters KB, KT, and all for here and K. K we know that. What is K? What is K? What is K? For hollow shaft. What is K for hollow shaft? Pi into D naught cube divided by or 16 D, D naught cube divided by what is the formula? No idea. What is lambda? What is lambda? Ratio of D to D. The ratio of D to D is the diameter to the outer diameter. The notation is changed here. The K is nothing but the ratio of inner diameter to the outer diameter. That's what I am saying. Don't get confused with the notations. So we have to see the formula. Okay, here the case in the diameter to the outer diameter and what is this KT and KB? Okay, so most of the cases shaft are not subjected to torsion and bending alone. Most of the cases shaft are subjected to fluctuating loads. Okay, for those kind of problems we have to introduce two parameters called combined shock parameters or combined shock factor for torsion and combined shock factor for bending. Okay. So KT is nothing but, what is that? Combined shock factor for tension, that is torsion and combined shock parameter for bending. This is KT. So, the rotation may be available here. Sure. Yeah. So KT is the combined shock and bending factor. If the shock subjected to fluctuating load. The load is not constant always. For smaller application, for simple application, the load is constant. It may be twisting or bending. But most of the application, practical application, shafts are subjected to some fluctuating load. Okay, for those kind of design, we have to introduce these two parameters, combined shock factors, KB and KT value. So where I can get this value? I am not going to find out this KT value or KT value, whatever. Which is also available in your data book. Already given. I will tell you the place number. Okay? So KT and KB is nothing but the combined shock factors. The petty factor. Okay? Here. Right. And what is all for you? FA is the axial force. FA is nothing but the axial force. Right? What is all for here? How do we calculate axial force FA? How do we calculate axial force FA? What is the relation? Stress is equal to load by area. What is load here? Axial load. That's a general formula. Stress is equal to load by area. So FA is nothing but stress in the area. Stress in the area. Okay. And what is what is that? Angle. Not angle. What is it? It's called as column factor. It's called as column factor. So you might have studied in your strength of material. So shafts are slender. If it is too large, it can be size. So it might be considered in a slender. Slender ratio. Okay. For those kind of shafts, we have to introduce this parameter also. Column factor. So this is generally based on the type of inch. It may be hinged or it may be fixed or it may be rolled in and what are the case. Okay? So this values are available in your data book. So this generally, in this alpha value is generally one, this equation is available in your data book. So we have to find out this L by K. What is L here? Length of the shaft. What is K? The ratio of inner diameter to the outer diameter. So the thing is, we have to substitute this L value and K value in this equation. So we have to confirm that which is less than 1.5 or greater than 1.5. So if it is L by K ratio is less than 1.5, that we can use this formula. If it is greater than that, we have to use this formula. Clear? Or can I explain it? One second.
further explanation is needed. The simple thing, so we have the same formula, three parameters only we are introducing. Right? One is KT and KT. Combined short factor, fatigue factor, where the shaft is subjected to fluctuating load. So KT, KB value can be taken from the data book. So that is depends upon the shaft. It may be a stagnant shaft or revolving shaft. So values are available. So only thing is we have to interpret the question. We have to understand the application of the shaft. Based on that, we have to choose KT and KT value. And second one is this delta value. Sorry, this alpha value, column factor. So column factor is nothing but L by K. Depends upon the L by K ratio. K is the length of the shaft. K is the inner diameter to the outer diameter ratio. So if the L by K ratio is less than 115, so we can directly use this formula. If it is greater than that, we have to use this formula. So now, generally, if it is vertical, we call it column.
So, when we are discussing about the shaft is subjected to torsion as well as bending moment, so we have to consider two more parameters for equivalent bending moment and equivalent twisting moment. Okay, so what is that? Okay, so when we are, uh, when we ask you to design a shaft, it's subjected to bending and torsion, we have to use two theory to check whether the design is safe or not. For if it is a ductile material, we can use maximum shear stress theory. If it is a brittle material, we can use normal stress theory. Normal stress theory. By using the theory, we have to find out equivalent bending moment and equivalent twisting moment. To find out those parameters, the formula is to find the equivalent torsional moment. When we use maximum shear stress theory to find out the safer condition, root of mv square plus mv square. So what is the definition? What is that? So produce the same torsional shear stress in the shaft as under the combined action of bending moment and torsional moment. Okay, it's nothing but defined as the torsional moment which when acting alone will produce the same torsional shear on both the conditions subject to torsion as well as bending. And similarly for equivalent bending moment when we use maximum principal stress theory or normal stress theory both are same. Okay? So the power is Mv plus root of Mv square plus Mv square. Okay. So find out whether the design is safe or not. So what is that? Same. Produce same bending stress in the shaft under the combined action of bending moment and power moment. Same form. Okay. Right. Right. So this is the aim. Case of the shaft for design for KB and KB. So this value is available in your data book. So one the thing is, we have to identify the condition. So whether the shaft is loaded gradually or loaded suddenly, if it is a rotating shaft or a stationary shaft. So based on the application, we have to select KB value and KB value. We have to directly substitute of the formula to find out the diameter of the shaft. Whether it may be hollow shaft or solid shaft. Next. So what we have discussed is based on strength quantity. When subjected to torsion, when subjected to bending, subjected to torsion plus bending, and the last case is subjected to axial load in addition with torsion and bending. So what we have discussed is all about only based on strength. So next case is based on rigidity and stiffness. So we know the general formula. To find out the angle of twist, what is the formula? P by J is equal to? What is the formula? P by J is equal to? G T tau by M. So by considering the angle of twist, to find out the angle of twist. It's a basic strength of material formula. T by J, you know that, moment. Then J is the polar moment of position and G is the modulus of rigidity. And T is the angle of twist and L is the length. For a particular length, we have to find out the what? Theta. It should be minimum or should be within the limit. For example, for one meter length, the theta value should not uh, exceed 3 degree or 2 degree. So it depends upon the application. Okay? For this kind of uh, formulas can be used for design of captions and twist drill also. Because we are considering the theta mainly. So G value is also available in your data book that based on the application. Okay, so we can directly choose this. Right? So this is a formula here. Can you substitute T value and J value by the value to be equal to and the L value and everything here? So finally, we are getting the formula pi 84 is the MI divided by G D power. So this is the final equation. Okay, so what is MT? Torque transmitted by the shaft. And what is here? Length of the shaft and G is the modulus of rigidity and D is the diameter of the shaft. So from this equation, we can easily find out the angle of twist. And before that, for this kind of problem, we have to find out the diameter of the shaft. First of all, of then only we can easily find out the angle of twist. If angle of twist is available, we are asked to find out the diameter of the shaft. We can easily find out by using this equation. This is for solid shaft. For hollow shot, we have to introduce how the diameter as well as the mean and Okay. So, theta value is given angle of twist in degree, but in general practice, we have to convert into radius, into pi by 
morning. You might 
Okay, so T3 minus T4 return R2. R2 is nothing but the radius of the pulley C. Okay, so from this equation, substitute all the equation, we can easily find out T3 value and T4 value. This is very common. Okay, so what we have done? We have found out P1 value, T2 value, T3 value and T4 value. And top transmitted by the pulley B also determined. Because we know the formula, top is equal to P1 minus P2 is top. So everything is determined. Then, just So consider this shaft. What is the total vertical load acting on this shaft? What is the total vertical load acting on the shaft? Can I know What is the total vertical load? I am talking about only vertical load. What is the total vertical load acting on the shaft? It is nothing but P1 plus P2. We have written P1 plus P2. What is the total weight acting in a horizontal direction on the shaft? P3 plus P2. P3 plus P2. Right? Then, so P1, P2, P3, P4. Determined. Next case, we have to find out the reaction. Okay? So consider this is a simply supported. Right? Because both ends are supported by a parallel. Consider this is a sim simply supported here. Right? So what is the reaction at this point? R A. And what is the reaction for this? R A. So when we consider about only vertical loading, we have to find out R B A and R B D. Right? Reaction on at the point A. Due to the vertical loading, reaction at this point B due to vertical loading. That we have to find out. Then, moment acting on the point A, B, B, and C. That we have to find out. And similar procedure is to be followed for this horizontal loading. What is the reaction when the pulley, when the pulley is subjected to horizontal loading? This pulley C is subjected to so what we have to find out? R A H or D H. Then moment about A, B, C and D. So from deriving all the things, okay, we have to find out the maximum bending for vertical loading and maximum bending for horizontal loading. Then finally we have to substitute in the formula to find out the safer diameter of a shaft. Okay, that we'll see. Okay, here P1, P2, P3, P4 already determined. Let us go. So here, negative the weight of the pulley and downward force on the pulley B is P1 plus P2. Vertical load is P1 plus P2. And similarly for C is P3 plus P4. Okay, and here forces and bending moment in the vertical and horizontal plane are shown in the figure. Actually, they are bound up and directly shown on the drawing. That, but we have to find out the reaction and bending moment for pulley B and pulley C. Then the resultant bending, so directly we have used this formula, but I have found out all the things. Please, please, please. Just move it. Yes, let's zoom in.
problem. So again, we will be having BC at the pulley. Okay. So the pulley B is located 200 amount away from, sorry, from A. And similarly, the pulley C is mounted 200 amount from the bearing end B. Okay. The total distance is 1000. Okay. Right. So let us take moment about A. Okay. So this is the reaction. R A B and this is R B. So this R B B, right? R B B into what is the total distance? Thousand. Okay, is equal to what is the total force acting here? Three six seven six point four. In what is the distance? What is the distance? Two hundred m. So from this, I am substituting all the values and I have found out what is R B B value and R A B. Reaction at B and reaction at B. Okay, so only thing is we have to take moment about A. So when we take moment about A, this R B B into thousand is equal to P1 plus P2 value into what is the distance? What is the distance here? What is the distance vertical of 200? So we can get reaction at B point, reaction at A point. Okay, so R B B and we have R A B determined. Next, we have to find out the bending moment. Bending moment of about A, bending moment of about B, C and D. So we know that no load is acting on the point A and D. So bending moment at A and D is equal to C. Okay, so we have to find out only bending moment as B, bending moment at C for vertical load. For vertical load. When here, <coughs> so vertical moment for A point and D point is equal to 0, determine. Then I am taking moment about, bending moment at the point B. What is the distance? What is the distance here? R A B. Already found R A B into this 200. Okay, so determine. And similarly for this case, for C point, or this one is reaction at D. R B B into this 200. What is the value? So bending moment at A B C B determine. Close. Similar procedure.